everybody wants to win the Monte Carlo Rally. It was very glamorous at then. When I joined BMC, the Mini came along and surprised the world. It became a David and Goliath, the might of the other car manufacturers spending a fortune trying to win the event. It was a small car, so the roads looked big to the Mini. We're beaten by the big American cars down the streets, but we would beat them in the twisty bits. It was difficult from the point of view of snow and ice, the fight you had against nature. And we got to the finish, and it's not like modern day with telephones and electronics, so nobody knew who was doing well. And I got woken at 4 o'clock in the morning by a French journalist, and he said, I think you've won the rally. There was a great combination coming together of hard work, wonderful team of mechanics, team manager, wonderful co-driver. And the Mini to win that against really powerful cars showed how good it was. It made the car famous, and my biggest thrill probably wasn't winning the rally, was meeting Princess Grace, because <laughs> she was a very famous film star. And Bruce Forsyth did a Sunday night at the Palladium show, and um, they got the Mini on that. So 27 million viewers saw that the Mini had won the Monte Carlo Rally. It was wonderful because the Beatles uh, sent me a telegram. When I flew back in after the rally, I turned right at a no-entry sign or something, and a policeman stopped and said, who do you think you are, Paddy Hofkirk? <laughs> I'm so flattered. I mean, motorsport's long behind me now, and uh, for it to be remembered in this way is, is a great thrill, a great honor. The designers at Mini have, have done a wonderful job, and they've got a lot of the features with the 37 on it, with the stripe and the colors. It reminds me of my very lucky days. Oh, it's just wonderful memories.